Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 8, and it reads, The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied, both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. The prophet which prophesieth of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord hath truly sent him. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash. Next, double honors to the head apostle slash elder bishop of Great Millstone, the one that taught me the 100% truth according to the Bible, peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere items. Keep pushing, keep believing, keep the faith. Regardless of people here for a bit, just, keep, just constantly just hitting them in the head, hitting them in the head, hitting them in the head, hitting them in the head. The job of a prophet. You're going to know that a prophet had been among you. I tell you that in Ezekiel, the second chapter. Lord willing, we'll get that. When all these things start coming to pass, all these prophecies start kicking in the high gear. You know, you're no longer gonna be mocking and scoffing and you know, slandering and, and lying your ass off. When these prophecies come to full fruition and, and they're coming to pass as I make this video, the Lord gonna start deleting more people, He's gonna start deleting these false prophets. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna the scriptures say mark them, man. Put the scope on them, call them out. Because the true prophets of the Lord is supposed to be prophesying. Every time you turn around, it's supposed to be prophesying, man. All right. What are these? Let's get it again. Jeremiah 28 and 8. The prophet, the Lord told us to prophesy, all right? This is the spirit that we're coming in. And so what? You tired of us bringing these scriptures out. So what? Go watch something else. Because this is what the Lord told us to do. We're doing what the Lord commanded us to do. Now you do what your mind is telling you to do. And we're going to obey you. How about Shemiah was shot? Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied. Now, Jeremiah is telling you what he's going to be doing and what the prophets that came before him was doing and what the prophets that are going to come after him are going to be doing. They're going to be prophesying. Telling you what's going to happen before it even happens. And if you don't take heed, it look, that's on you. It ain't on the prophet. The job of the prophet was to prophesy. His job wasn't to make you believe. That's the Lord's job. They prophesied against many countries and against great kingdoms of war. We're in the beginning stages of war. You see, you got actual wars popping up pursuant to um, do, uh, what is it? Um, Saint Matthew the twenty fourth chapter. You see, these are all some of the tall tale signs that the Lord is on His way. They prophesied of war and of evil, meaning bad times, and of pestilence. The prophet which prophesieth of peace, that's what the majority of these Israelite groups are doing. They're prophesying of peace. Well, we're, we're, we're going to keep calling it out, man. They, they're telling you that you better off. You know what I'm saying? The hell with prophesying. Let's build a community. Let's gather up all our monies, and we're going to build a community and go somewhere where, where we can feel safe. When Micah 2 and 10 tell you this is not our rest. You see, but but anywho, the prophet which prophesied of peace, when the word, when the scripture tell you, First Thessalonians 5 and 3, for when they shall say peace, matter of fact, let's get that right quick. We'll come right back. Let's just get it. Let's just get it. First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3. Because the scripture say, um, when, when, if a prophet prophesied of peace, let's get this. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3. You got to watch these people. You got to put a scope on them. You see, don't just look at their outfits or, or how many people are in their congregation. Listen to what they're saying and see if it adds up, see if it matches up to what the scriptures are saying. All right. Pray for the spirit of discernment to discern who's serving the Lord or who ain't, man. And the Lord will give it to you. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, that's what the average Israelite group is teaching. You know, husband and love, they don't go in their privacy. It's, it's a gag order. And I'm going to do a lesson on that too, Lord willing, by the end of the day. I'm going to bring out the, um, the, um, the 501c3. Um, pretty much I got the papers on, on which you can go into and which you can't go into. And the majority of these Israelite groups, they got 501c3 charters. You see, tax exempt. But, but it's a gag order on teaching the truth. 
So, so of course, they're going to say we're living in peaceful times. Of course, they're going to say there's no Jacob trouble. Of course, they're not going to prophesy of martial law. Of course, they're not going to prophesy of the doom and gloom and destruction of this wicked, sinful kingdom of America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great. Of course, they're going to say it's June. They're not going to teach about the M-O-T to the B-B-B-B-B. For when they shall say peace and safety, this sudden destruction coming upon them as travailed upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So watch out for the Israelite groups that are pushing a peaceful doctrine and a peaceful message. No, no, we let, according to the Bible, starting off with the head apostles slash elder bishop of Great Millstone, we let you know that all hell is going to break loose. Jacob trouble is going to pop off. You see, look, many casualties. Billions on top of billions of Israelites deleted in the streets, man. In, in, in the concentration camp, man. All right? In the fever camps. All the above, man. Race wars, class wars, civil wars, earthquakes, diverse places. The whole shebang, man. We go into that, man. But, but watch out for the Israelite groups that are teaching peace. Because sudden destruction. Oh, the way they say famine shall not be in this land. But, but the Lord said, by sword and famine shall those false prophets be destroyed. And let's go back. Let's, let's go right back. And I'm, I'm going to see if I can get that too. Because the true prophets are supposed to be prophesying. Matter of fact, let me just cure it up. Let me just, let me just cure it up. Bear with me. Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 15 Therefore thus saith the Lord Yahweh concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name and I sent them not yet they say sword meaning destruction and famine shall not be in this land that's what they say but now they're trying to renege now now they're trying to say that they ain't never say that well what I meant to say was what what happened was Nah, 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 man. You don't play around. That, that's you playing around with somebody like man playing Russian roulette with somebody like well, what I said, well, what, what, what happened was, or what I meant to say was. That's you being double minded. Lord said, let your yay be yay and your um nay be nay, man. Anything other than that is you being wicked, man. Jeremiah 14, 15. Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, through his only begotten son Yahweh shall concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name. And I sent them not. But they will have you believe that the Lord sent them, all right? Yet they say sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and famine shall those prophets, those wicked, evil, evil prophets, right? By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed, man. This is exactly what's going to happen, man. These false prophets, they ain't, they ain't doing a damn thing but lying to the congregation, man. And, and the Lord said, this was going to happen. Woe to you when all men shall speak well of you. So, of course, the false prophets are going to be spoken well of. The true prophets, people are going to be, let's get a matter of fact, we, we, got, we must be allowed to get that. Let's just get it right quick. This is going to be happening to the true prophets of the Lord, right? We're going we're gonna to try to finish that Jeremiah 28 off. We'll go right back there. St. Luke chapter 6. This is going to be happening to the true prophets. Say, look, look, look. When I read this scripture, tell, tell yourself, who does this fit? Who does this scripture fit? St. Luke chapter 6, verse 22. Blessed are ye. Should I blow it? Should I, do I need to blow it up? Do I need to blow it up? St. Luke chapter 6, verse 22. Blessed are ye. This red letter, Lord Yahweh Shai speaking, who they even call Jesus, right? Blessed are ye when men shall hate you. Who's the most hated Israelite group known to mankind? You, you, you know who it is. But, but the Lord said, blessed, and the phone chimed in. The Lord said, blessed are ye when men shall hate you. And when they shall separate you from their company. And shall reproach you. And cast out your name as evil who did everybody do that to what Israelite group did all these other Israelite groups do this to man they hate us without a cause they separate them themselves from us you see they reproached us they cast out our name as evil 
for the son of man's sake. And that's what they did it for. Look, look, all in the name for the son of man's sake. We're being reproached. We're being hated for the name of Yahweh by Shem And the phone keep chiming in. But the Lord said, it, it's a blessing, man. It's a blessing to be hated by these goobers, man. You see, what it say? Rejoice 23. St. Luke 6, 23, rejoice in that day when, when, when the whole world comes up against you. When, when they start slandering our names, mocking, scoffing, bummer lights, right? Look, bummer lights, morons. You know, look, and then they put a, um, a wonderful title on us. They call us um, faith-based Israelites. That, that's a wonderful title to have. Thank you. Thank you. Because pursuant to Hebrews 11 and 6, without faith, you can't please Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, right? Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in like manner did the fathers and to the prophets. So the true prophets of the Lord was always hated. So let's go back. For teaching the truth according to the Bible, all right? So Jeremiah 28. And nine, the prophet which prophesied of peace, and that's the majority of these Israelite group leaders, they're prophesying of peace. You see, and, and the scope is on them, man. When the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord had truly sent him. So if, so if peace come, you know that the Lord sent that prophet. We go through this all the time. If war, if destruction, if evils come then you know the lord had truly said that prophet man you should have the spirit of discernment to be able to see who's who right now you see and, and i want to get that and i want to get that i'm gonna bring out one more and then i'm gonna wrap up i'm gonna wrap up this is malachi chapter three pray for the spirit of discernment to see who's who remember and i'm, I'm, I'm gonna get that too I'm going to get that too. Malachi chapter 3. Just straight to the point. Malachi chapter 3 verse 18. Then shall ye return and discern. You see? Discern. Let's, let's just get the definition. Jake don't never look up nothing. Let's just get the definition. Malachi chapter 3 verse 8. We're we looking up the meaning of discern. Let's play it. Discern. Discern. Perceive or recognize something. You see? What was what, it saying in the world? Real, recognize, real, detect, recognize, perceive, observe, see. Look, 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 going right back to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter, verse 16. Blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear through the spirit, man. Determine. You see? Identify, distinguish. The Lord has given us a spirit to distinguish who's who, man. All right? D d uh, what does it say? Differentiate, man. You see, tell apart. You can't. You you've been around this long, and you can't tell who's who. You, you you need to you need to pray to the Lord. Then you see. So once again, Malachi chapter three verse eighteen. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between him that serveth the Most High and him that serveth him not. And you, you can't discern that by now. It's 2022 going on 2023. And you mean to tell me you can't, you still can't discern who's teaching the truth and who ain't? Who, who's all about gimmicks and who ain't? You, you, you just still can't tell, right? All hell breaking loose. Who's warning you of these things? Who's actually going into the scripture? You can't tell. You you still trying to figure it out. Damn. Let's see. Let's see something right quick, man. I got one more. I got one more after this. I got, I got one more after this. Just bear with me. I didn't want that. It's just it's like mind boggling. Jake don't even know what the hell is going on. They, they can't discern a true prophet from a false prophet. Still don't know what the hell is going on. Let's see. Bear with me. Just looking through the scriptures. Yeah, St. Matthew chapter 7. Let's see where I want to start at. Let's see. I want to start at 17. 
St. Matthew chapter 7, verse 17. Matter of fact, I started 15. Beware false prophets which come unto you in sheep's clothing. They looked the part. They looked the part. The Lord said, Beware of these false prophets, Israel. It's teaching you lies. Coming with that smooth doctrine. You see, when all hell break loose, they ain't really telling you how bad it's going to be. You see, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are ravening wolves, man. They're ravening wolves, man. They, they don't care if you live or die in all actuality. You see, you shall know them by their fruits. By their ways, right? Do men gather grapes of thorns, of figs, of thistles? So even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. When you go to the grocery store, you mean to tell me you can't discern between a bad apple and a good apple? A good banana and a bad banana? Some good grapes and some bad grapes? When you go to the grocery store, you can discern between an old-ass orange and a fresh orange, right? Well, it's the same thing between the true prophets, you know what I'm saying, and the false prophets. You should be able to discern by what they teach and their ways, how they conduct themselves, all of the above, man. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs or thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. You, you you still can't discern that, right? You still can't look and, and see who's bringing forth good fruit and who's bringing forth evil fruit. You, you still don't know, right? You, you still don't know. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. And that's what the Lord's going to do. You see, that wicked, corrupt tree they brought forth bad fruit. The Lord said he's going to cut it down. He's going to throw it into the fire, man. All right? Which represents these false prophets and their wicked congregation, man. The people that follow them, man. Now, the hopeful elect that's among these evil, wicked groups, you know what I'm saying? The Lord's going to, you know what I'm saying, eventually get them from among them and, just, and destroy the rest of them, man. You see? Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them, man. All right? And that's plain. Let's get another one, man. I got one more. Because our job is to prophesy. All right? Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people. The words of prophecy. So what Israelite group is known for prophesying? All right? And going into all kinds of topics. You see? Bringing out history, everything, man. Just, just bringing it all out. Te teaching you the 100% truth according to the Bible, right? Who's been doing that for years? Start, look, starting off with our head apostles slash elder bishops of Great Millstone. And then men on down. Then, oh, I'm going to read it again. Second Ezra chapter 15. This is the spirit of Lord Yahweh Shai. Who's coming with the proper names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son in the Hebrew tongue? On every video, confessing the name of the Lord, going right back down. I, 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 I gotta get that too. Be all over the place. Behold, speak down the ears of my people the words of prophecy which I will put in thy mouth. Save the Lord. Let's just get it right quick. I'm gonna be all over the place with this one. You already know. Let's get this right quick. Saint Matthew, I must be allowed to get this. And Lord willing, I come right back. Saint Matthew chapter ten. Confessing the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. That's the most important thing of this thing. That's the more important aspect you know what I'm saying, of this thing of ours. This truth is the names. St. Matthew chapter 10. Go straight to the point. St. Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. It don't get no plainer than that, right? It look. It don't get no plainer than that. 
Therefore, whosoever shall confess me, remember the men that stood so stiffly. Ezra's marvel at the men that stood so stiffly for the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh When all odds were stacked against them, they stood stiffly for the name of the Lord. They wouldn't budge, they didn't move. They didn't say, We don't know the name. We'll get it when the Lord come back. No, they stood stiffly. The Lord said, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, let's talk about now. Him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. Who's confessing the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son in the Hebrew? Yeah, the Hebrew. Week in and week out. Who's doing that, man? But whosoever shall deny me before men. Now, who's denying the Lord before men? Who's denying Yahweh through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, before men? You, you, you still don't know. Remember, a tree may be known by its fruit, man. If the tree is corrupt, the fruit is going to be corrupt. If the tree is bad, then the fruit is going to be bad, man. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. And look up the meaning of the word, man. All right? So you deny Lord Yahweh Shai, he says he's going to deny you. In your darkest hour, you're going to be denied. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 2. And call them to be written in payment, for they are faithful and true. Fear not the imagination against thee. Let not the incredulity mean an unbelief of them trouble thee that speak against thee. So they're speaking against us, but we don't let that worry us. Okay? For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. Our job is to prophesy these things. While these false Israelite groups are saying that sword and famine is not going to be in this land, what are we doing? Prophesying of pestilence, plagues, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. That's our job, man. A tree may be known by its fruit. Shalom.